So unless you have been hiding under a rock, you have figured out by now that Peter McKinnon and Polar Pro have come together to make the perfect variable ND filter. But if you're like me, you get super pumped on it and then go try to buy it and realize it's $250, have a mild heart attack and realize it's not in your budget. So if the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro variable ND filters are a little bit out of your budget, Today's the video for you because we're going to talk about some alternatives you can look for as far as ND filters go. So let's do this. saying that everybody has an explanation for ND filters. So I'm gonna give you the uh, abridged version, the Anson & Co version, right? Okay, here we go. So you have your exposure pyramid, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. So when you are shooting manually and you want the best results for that creamy cinematic footage, you're gonna shoot having your ISO relatively low so you're not creating a whole bunch of noise. You're gonna make your shutter speed double what your frame rate is. And so if you're doing cinematic stuff, it's 24 frames a second. If you're doing slow-mo, maybe 60 to 120 frames per second. And your shutter speed is always gonna be double that to look as natural motion as possible. And then your aperture is gonna be relatively low depending on what you want as far as bokeh in the background. So somewhere between an F 1.4 and an F 2.8. So with all that in mind, when you set up your settings to be that way and you're outside, this is kind of what your shot's gonna look like. When you introduce the ND filter, which everyone has said is like sunglasses for your lens, and that's true, it's gonna look something like this. So that catches us all up as far as why you would need an ND filter. With that being said, I'm gonna mention three ND filters that I think you should check out. Let's start with the really budget variable ND filters. And these are actually the ones that I use. This is the newer variable ND filter, and I'll leave a link below. I'll leave a link to all of these I'm mentioning below. This one has been one that I've used and I've been super happy with. Now, there are some setbacks. It does not have stops, so if I go too far, we'll see the X on there. I have seen reviews where you get more of a green tint out of this filter. I haven't personally noticed that, but I have seen some results where it does look like there's a green tint to it. This one comes in at about $20 to $25, but again, this is one that I bought when I first started out with videography and I've been using ever since. If you're just starting out and you need a solution to save your footage from being super blown out, super overexposed while getting cinematic creamy footage, this is one to check out. Newer variable ND filter, like I said, link below. The next two brands I haven't had personal experience with, but I have seen some great reviews on them. The next price point, it's around the $50, $60 range, is by Gobi. Depending on what YouTubers you follow, you may have heard of this brand. Lizzie Pierce uses these. James Popsis uses these. They're just a really great brand. They're kind of in that middle market. I've seen a lot of good reviews on them. The last one to recommend is the Tiffin Variable ND. I know that there are a lot of YouTubers that use this as well. Maddie Haboya uses Tiffin. It's a little bit more expensive. It's about $100 to $120, depending on what thread size you're looking for. But these are a good brand as well. Check out these three different brands. You have newer for kind of the lower price point, Gobi for kind of that middle price point, the Tiffin for a little bit higher, and then of course you have the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro. The point of this video is really to drive home buy within your budget, especially as you're starting out in videography. This can get really expensive. Once you start buying all the gear, lighting, audio, camera gear in general can get very expensive. So start by buying within your budget. And that doesn't just ring true of ND filters or filters in general, lenses, camera bodies, audio. You know, a lot of the stuff that I use is still very budget friendly. I use an A6300. I'm, I'm working with a Sigma lens right now. I have a Rode Video Micro. I have a, you know, uh, studio lighting that I bought when I first started YouTube videos back with a channel that was just very painful to watch. <laughs> and so, that being said, buy within your budget. Don't think that because you know Peter McKinnon's name is as hyped as we are about the, his success and who he is as a creator and, and we may admire his work, just because his name is on this line of variable ND filters does not mean that you should go out tomorrow, spend $250, 
on those filters. Buy with what you have now, build up your arsenal, and slowly migrate to maybe better gear. Just a quick video of some alternative brands to check out if you're interested in getting the results you get from using ND filters, but just doing that without breaking the bank. So I hope this has been helpful for you. If you did enjoy the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you here next time. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Peace. So I hope you guys had a good week. It's so hot in here. I am sweating. <sighs> WrestleMania was dope. Also, the reason why you guys didn't get a video last weekend is because of WrestleMania. I spent five days watching wrestling. What more could you want? I'm sorry to my family. Did you guys watch WrestleMania if you did? If all two of you watch WrestleMania, let me know in the comments below what you think of the show. I thought it was dope. Seeing Becky Lynch win that title. What? Women's main event? Yes, please. I loved it. Oh, also.